transformation. On Monday, X filed a lawsuit against the Center for Countering Digital Hate, claiming the organization has, quote, embarked on a scare campaign to drive away advertisers from the platform. That's what Musk is claiming. X's legal action follows a report from that nonprofit that found that the platform failed to act on 99%, they allege, of Twitter's blue accounts that have posted hate. A lawyer for X first threatened legal action in July in a letter to the CCDH, alleging that the group has made, quote, inflammatory, outrageous, and false or misleading assertions about Twitter and its operations through its reports, which he argued lack scientific rigor. Well, ahead of the lawsuit being filed, the group called the legal threat baseless and said they stand by their research. I should note that Musk has recently called their CEO, who is our next guest, a rat, and called the nonprofit he runs truly evil. Joining us now is the CEO for the Center for Countering Digital Hate, Imran Ahmed. I appreciate your time this morning, and I should note since this overnight, just the last few hours, this lawsuit has been filed. We'll get to the specifics of it in a moment, but what is your response to Musk's attorney, who just says you're wrong to say that about 99% of their blue accounts? He says that your group provides no methodology for its selection or testing of tweets. Well, we've been incredibly transparent with our methodology. In fact, we have it on the website where we where we detail exactly what we did, and that's why they're able to criticize the methodology. We stand by it, of course. Mm -hmm. But that's you know that's just one claim he's made. In fact, he's kind of dropped that claim in the last week. And what he's now saying is that another study that we did that quantified, that put some numbers around the increase in hate, in hate speech on that platform when Mr. Musk took over. Mm -hmm. He's saying that that's the problem now. The truth is that he's been casting around for a reason to blame us mm -hmm. for his own failings as a CEO, because we all know that when he took over, he put up the bat signal to racists, to misogynists, to homophobes, to anti-Semites, saying Twitter is now a free speech platform. He welcomed them back on. He, he actually reinstated accounts that were suspended for spreading that kind of stuff. And now he's surprised when people are able to quantify that there has been a resulting increase in hate and disinformation on his platform. The, the methodology aspect that he's criticizing here, in part, uh, Musk, Musk's attorneys, they say that you chose 100 tweets and that, for example, of nearly 500 million tweets per day. Can you just explain to our viewers how you come to these findings? So what we did is we took a hundred random uh, tweets which we found to contain hate from Twitter blue accounts. We reported it to the platform using their own reporting tools, crucially. And then we went back and we checked what action was taken. Now, of course, we know that, that Twitter has terms of service. It has community standards. It has rules of its own that we're all meant to abide by. It's our responsibility as users, but we have a reciprocal right, therefore, to expect others to have to abide by them too, and for the platform to enforce those rules. What we found was 99 times out of 100, they failed to enforce those rules on Twitter blue users. Now, that is an extraordinary figure of failure. And Mr. Musk, rather than doing the right thing, which is to go crumbs, what's gone wrong with my platform? What's gone wrong with, with the way that we administer it? He's instead, Blaming Can, the messenger. What is what is your goal? I mean, you, you put this information out there. Let me put on the screen some other things that your organization um, alleges. You have noted that since Musk took over Twitter, tweets containing slurs have risen by 202%. Uh, also, tweets linking LGBTQ plus people to, quote, grooming have more than doubled. Climate denial content and accounts are, climate denial content and accounts are surging. What is your hope by putting this data out there? Is it that you hope Musk will change how X is run and what it allows on the platform? We just saw he allowed Kanye West back on this week. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, leaving Kanye West aside, I mean, all we do is hold up a mirror to the platform mm -hmm. and ask them to consider whether or not they like the reflection they see in it. Never before has one of these social media companies, and we, of course, analyze all social media companies without fear or favor. But when, when others don't like the reflection, they seek to change it. What Mr. Musk has done is said, I'm going to sue the mirror because I don't like what I see inside it. You are and that, I think, is what is, quite, what is so extraordinary about what's going on right now. You're, you're a nonprofit. Can you afford uh, this lawsuit against against your company? Because I wonder of other watchdogs out there watching if this might have a chilling effect being sued like this. 
Look, it, it will almost certainly have a chilling effect across the civil rights sector. Don't forget, it's not just CCDH that have done this sort of research. The Anti-Defamation League, Colour of Change, the NAACP, so many organisations. But we are right now the tip of the spear when it comes to creating the research that that drives change that 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 brings uh, information into the public sphere that allows people to draw their own conclusions and mr musk is targeting us mm. as a reason of course it's going to be incredibly expensive of course we are a non-profit we're small we rely on public donations we don't take money from social media companies we don't take money from governments so what we rely on is the generosity of philanthropic trusts and the mm. public and you know in the last 24 hours on our website site counterhate.com thousands of people have visited there so many have left uh, have given donations and that's what we're going to need if we're going to survive this imran before i let you go we did read through the lawsuit again it came in, in in the middle of the night filed in the northern district of california i just want to allow you an opportunity to respond to one of the key allegations here they make uh they say that your group scraped data from x's platform in violation of the express terms of the agreement and that they that your organization convinced an unknown third party to improperly share login credentials and secure uh, to a secure database that CCDH then access to retrieve information without authorization. Your response? I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of unknowns that they that they are claiming to get to where they want to get. It sounds a bit like a conspiracy theory to me. I think what's really important to note here is that the reason that organizations like CCDH have to rely on you know, methodologies like we do is because there is no transparency on these platforms. Mr. Musk talks a big game about free speech, but when it comes to transparency, one of the vital elements in any democratic society, he is failing. He's got an F grade. Now, the truth is that we need federal legislation to ensure transparency and accountability for these companies. And until then, the best hope that the public have when it comes to protecting our kids, protecting ourselves, protecting our democracy is organizations like mine, the Center for Countering Digital Hate. Imran Ahmed, thank you. Uh, you're welcome back as, of course, Elon Musk and any